but it's nothing, nothing fancy, okay. nothing complicated. <coughs> okay, is this is this making sense to people? Like, how do you how do you deal with improper integrals? It's very simple, right? You just take you just take limits. Um, Um, so, uh, uh, comparison test. Okay. Comparison test for it's to determine divergence or convergence. So sometimes, um, you know, you don't really care what the integral is, but you want to know if it's convergent or divergent. Okay, like you have some integral. All you all you need to know is that it's a finite number. Okay, if it's a finite number, good. So um, there's a way of. Um, oh, 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 so I, I should say one thing. Um, sorry, one remark here. If somebody talks about something like this, the integral from negative <coughs> infinity to positive infinity, right, the integral of a function over the whole whole real line, um, the way uh, you look at that is the, you break it up into two parts. The integral from zero to infinity and the integral from negative infinity to zero. Okay, and it, zero could be any number. In fact, right, this, this could be any number a. So you just break it up into two integrals, and you check the convergence of you check the convergence of both of those guys, right? If they converge to some number, some numbers, then you say this is the sum of those numbers. Okay. So um, uh, if those are both convergent. that the integral over the whole real line is going to be the sum of these uh, integrals over half of the real line, as long as both of those guys are convergent. If, if either is divergent, we say this thing is divergent. It's, it's, this is all pretty natural. Right? OK. So um, okay, so let's talk about the comparison test. So the comparison test says this: um, if you have two functions f and g, which are continuous, um, with f of x bigger than g of x and g of x is bigger than zero for all x, <coughs> I should say that this upside down a means <coughs> all. <coughs> So for all, upside down, upside down A means for all. Okay. Just like the backwards E, right, the backwards E meant there exists. Okay. So suppose you have functions, right, where um, you know, one guy, F, is always bigger than the other guy, and that guy, G, is always bigger than zero. OK. Then, um, if the integral of f from a to infinity is convergent, then uh, then what? What am I going to say? If the integral of f is convergent, then the integral of g is convergent. Okay. What's the second thing I'm going to say? Detail how about how would you tell me this oh, the second statement? Um, the integral of i is always bigger than 
No, that's too easy. Say something better than that. Okay, that's it. Does anyone, can anyone guess what the second statement is? Yes, jump on. No, it's, it's, that's not true, actually. If, if the integral of f is divergent, then the integral of g is divergent? No, that's not true. Because you could have some huge function, right? right? This f is always divergent. That would mean that everybody is divergent, right? So no. <coughs> Anyone guess? Shui you look like you know the answer. What's the answer? Oh, OK. Very good, yeah. If, if the integral of g is, is divergent, then the integral of f is also divergent. Right, that makes sense, right? If the bigger guy converges, then the smaller guy converges. If the smaller guy diverges, well, then the bigger guy has to diverge, too. We could have used this when we were talking about 1 over x to the p, right? Because we knew that um, 1 over x uh, diverged, right? We knew that this diverged, right? So then um, if p is 1 over x to the p, where p is smaller than 1, that's bigger, right? That's going to be bigger. So the theorem will tell us that um, the integral of 1 over x to the p, if p is bigger than 1, p is bigger than 1, then this thing diverges. Right. The, the, the comparison theorem would have would have told us something about 1 over x to the p. It wouldn't tell us everything that we figured out. Right? It doesn't tell us about the convergence when p is less than 1. But it does tell us about the divergence when p is greater than 1. So somebody gives you this uh, integral. The integral of 1 to infinity of, of, of x plus 1 over the square root of x to the fourth minus x, and says, is it convergent or divergent? Convergent or divergent? Okay, so I'm going to ask people to um, make guesses. <coughs> so, um, uh, Tenor and Hal says divergent. Who will anybody else say? Who else says divergent? Who says convergent? Two people say convergent, one person says divergent. Okay. Wait, raise your hands again. So who says it's going to be divergent? You get an infinite answer. I want you to make a vote, okay? Even if you even if you have no idea, I just want you to make it. No, 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 forget it. If you have some if you have some idea, then make make a guess. Oh, he's changing his mind. Okay. So who says convergent? Convergent. It's going to be a finite answer. Okay. Okay. Why do you, again? Let's talk. Why do you say it's convergent? Why do you, uh, 
uh, Chen and Ahab do? Why do you say? Why do you think it's conversion? X to the one. The p is going to be one. But if the p is one, that's divergent, right? Right. One over x. Right. One over x is divergent. Right. Right. When p is one, it's diverges. Okay. Okay. Um. And Xin how about you? Why do you? Just a guess. Okay. Uh. Xu Chen. Xu Chen Chen. Okay. So certainly, um, you know, the top grows slower than the bottom, right? The top is growing slower than the bottom, right? The whole thing is going to go to zero, right? These, the, the, the function, without a doubt, is going to go to zero. But the question is, is it going to zero fast enough, right? Okay. Just going to zero doesn't tell you if the integral is going to be conversion or divergent. Right? Remember when we had 1 over x to the p, right? when you have 1 over x, you know, one of the function 1 over x goes to 0, but the, the area under it was infinite. Okay. So be careful. You know, just going the integrand going to 0, that's not, good, that's not enough for you to say. The question is, how fast? How fast is the integrand going to 0? Okay, does anybody want to say anything at this point? Well, boy, you look like you were thinking. It's just like 1 over x. Yeah. yeah. And 1 over x is, is divergent. Yeah. 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 That's, that's actually the answer. The answer is it's actually going to be divergent. Chen and Han, you should have stayed with the original answer. <laughs> OK. OK. So um, let's use the, you know, you can sort of see that just by, you know, you know thinking a little bit. You say, well, look, you know, this one doesn't really matter that much. You know, this x doesn't really matter that much. And so this thing basically is, you know, x over x squared, right? Well, x over x squared is one over x. One over x is divergent. One over x, the integral is divergent. Okay, but let's use the comparison theorem to make this um, more proper. Okay, so here's, here's what you might say. You say, well, look, um, x plus one over x to the fourth minus x, <coughs> you know, that's certainly bigger than x over x to the fourth minus x, right, for, um, for, big, for big x, right? Oh, don't need to say it. Right, x is bigger than one, so I don't have to worry, I don't have to worry about these guys being negative. OK, right? And further, this thing on the bottom here, if I, I know that um, if I subtract x, then I'm dividing by something, um, uh, let me say it this way. If I divide by something smaller, then that's going to be bigger than, than this, <coughs> right? Because here, uh, this is going to be, right? This is this, right? This is bigger than that, right? This is bigger than that. So one over this is smaller than one over that, right? Make sense, right? X squared of x to the four is bigger than square root of x to the four minus x, right? At least for x bigger than one. Okay. Oops. <coughs> x to the four, right? And so one over it is going to be smaller than that. So I can I can go like this. This is x over x to the four. Okay. That's one over 
that's x over x squared, that's to say 1 over x. So uh, then you say, by the comparison theorem, right, since the integral of 1 over x from 1 to infinity diverges, the comparison test says that the integral from 1 to infinity of x plus 1 over square root of 6 to the fourth minus x dx uh, diverges. Right. The bigger guy, the, the bigger integrand, uh, this integrand is bigger than that. So if this guy's <coughs> integral diverges, that guy's integral diverges. Right. Okay. Any questions? Any questions on this on this one problem? I'm gonna put up another problem. One last problem for this section. Okay. Uh, does the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx converge or diverge? Which one? Does it converge or does it diverge? So maybe I'll ask you to guess again. Convergent or divergent? Who says it's going to be finite? Who thinks it's going to be finite? Who thinks it's going to be infinite? Okay. Chen Renhao says convergent. An Xinyi says divergent. Divergent. Wang Bo says divergent. Zhang Gong Zhe says divergent. The answer is, it's convergent. <laughs> okay, so wh why do you why do you say ten and half? Why is it convergent? What's the what's the intuition? Just a guess. Just a guess. Yeah, I mean that's that's okay, right? But the thing is, so the thing you want to think of is that e to the negative x. <coughs> is a very fast decreasing function, right? e to the x, right, looks like this, very fast increasing, right? e to the, e to the x, right? e to the negative x is the reflection of that, right? Of this function that really decreases. e to the negative x squared, e to the negative. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so the way you want to think is like this, right? E to the negative x is a very, so um, let's, uh, E to the negative x um, is bigger than E to the negative x squared, right? At least for, for x bigger than 1, right? What we're saying is that 1 over E to the x is bigger than 1 over e to the x squared, right? 1 over e to the x squared is smaller than 1 over e to the x, right? That's certainly true, right? So let's, um, <coughs> uh, so let's compare, right? right from, one, from 1 onwards, um, if we look at Look at the bigger guy, right? So this is the bigger, the bigger guy. So let's let's consider consider the integral from one to infinity of e to the minus x dx. 
let's look at the integral of the bigger guy, we'll see that that's actually finite. And so the smaller guy's integral will also be finite. So let me be a bit more systematic about this. So integral from 0 to infinity of e to the x, x squared dx. I'm going to write that as the integral from 0 to 1 plus the integral from 1 to infinity. OK. The reason I, I'm breaking it up like this is because um, <coughs> uh, uh, you can compare with e to the negative x, right? Because, um, right? Because e to the negative x, negative x is bigger than e to the negative x squared if x is bigger than one. Do I have to? <coughs> do I? Have, what, what? What about this part? What about this part? Do I have to worry about this part? No. No. Right. This is a continuous function on a on some on some bounded integral. This is some number. Right. It's some number. It doesn't matter what number it is. We're 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 asking is the integral uh, convergent or divergent? That finite number is not going to make any difference. Okay, so let's consider the, the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative x dx. Well, that's going to be the limit as b goes to infinity of 1 to b um, e to the negative x dx. Right? Again, you get um, negative e to the negative x between 1 and b as b goes to infinity. Right? So you get negative e to the negative b plus, plus e to the negative 1. Right. Right. But that's good. Right. You got just one over e, e to the negative one because this, this thing vanishes. Right. E to the negative b as b goes to infinity is going to vanish. So what does that tell you? What does that tell you? What does that tell you? The bigger guy converges, so the smaller guy converges too, right? So this thing, this thing is convergent, right? This thing is convergent by the comparison test, and so it converges. Integral Any questions? Any questions about about this game? Convergent, divergent? This convergent becomes this the speed is passing up. Yes, exactly. And yeah. compare with uh, uh, x one over x, so it, it is much slower, slower. Right, one over x doesn't it's a very <coughs> sl slowly decreasing function right and so that is divergent yeah so that that integral is divergent this integral this this integrand decreases really fast okay right 
if you right, if you look at e to the negative x, right? If you look at e to the negative x, yeah, right? Oops, that's not e to the negative x. If you look at e to the negative x from one to infinity, then this whole this whole area here is one over e, right? And the area for this thing is going to be smaller than that, right? From one to infinity, it will be smaller than that. Okay. So it really decreases quite quite fast. Quite quite fast. Okay. 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 So that's it for um, for this section. Uh, How are people doing? Are you okay? Are you tired? <laughs> okay, you all seem kind of tired. This, you see, there's 15 minutes left. I don't want to waste 15 minutes. F 15 minutes is enough to teach you something. That's the trouble. Well, five minutes. Five minutes is not enough to teach you something. Ten minutes is sort of borderline. Every time I have a five minutes break. <laughs> <laughs> If I give you a five minute break, I know it's going to turn into a 10 minute break. <laughs> it turns into a 10 minute break, there's only five minutes left. And I just said five minutes is not enough to teach you anything. It's trouble. Okay, take a five minute break. But it has to be a really five minute break. Okay, go, go.